When I was six years old, I received my gifts. My first grade teacher had this brilliant idea. She wanted us to experience receiving gifts, but also learning the virtue of complimenting each other. So she had all of us come to the front of the classroom, and she bought all of us gifts and stacked them in the corner. And she said, "Why don't we just stand here and compliment each other? If you hear your name called, go and pick up your gifts and sit down." What a wonderful idea, right? What could go wrong? <laughs> well, there were 40 of us to start with, and every time when I hear someone's name called, I would give out the heartiest cheer. And then there were 20 people left, and 10 people left, and five left, and three left. I was one of them, <laughs> and the compliments stopped. Well, at that moment, I was crying, and the teacher was freaking out. And she was like, "Hey, would anyone say anything nice about these people? <laughs> no one. Okay, why don't you go get your gift and sit down? So behave next year. Someone might say something nice about you." <laughs> well, uh, as I'm describing this to you, you probably know I remember this really well. <laughs> But I don't know who felt worse that day. Was that me or the teacher? She must realize that she turned a team-building event. Into a public roast for three six-year-olds, <laughs> and without the humor, you know, when you see people get roasted on TV, it was funny. There was nothing funny about that day. <laughs> so that that was one version of me, and I would die to avoid being in that situation again, to get rejected in public again. That's one version. Then fast forward eight years,、um, Bill Gates came to my hometown, Beijing, China, to speak, and I saw. His message, I love. I fell in love with that guy. I thought, wow, I know what I want to do now. That night, I wrote a letter to my family, telling them, by age 25, I will build the biggest company in the world, and that company will buy Microsoft. <laughs> I totally embrace this idea of conquering the world domination, right? And、uh, I didn't. No, I didn't make this up. I did write that letter, and here it is.、Um, <laughs> no, I. You don't have to read this through, and it's, it's, this is also bad handwriting. But I did highlight some keywords.、Um, you get the idea. So that was another version of me, wanting to conquer the world. Well, then two years later, I was、um, presented with the opportunity to come to the United States. I jumped on it, and because that was where Bill Gates lived, right? So, <laughs> I thought that was the start of my entrepreneurial journey. Then, fast forward another 14 years, I was 30. Nope, I didn't build that company. I didn't even start. I was actually a marketing manager for a Fortune 500 company, and I felt I was stuck. I was stagnant. Why is that? Where is that 14-year-old who wrote that letter? It's not because he didn't try. It's because. Every time I want had a new idea, every time I want to try something new, even at work, I, I wanted to make a proposal. I wanted to speak up in front of people in a group. I felt there was this constant battle between the 14-year-old and the six-year-old. One wanted to conquer the world, make a difference. Another was afraid of rejection. And every time, that six-year-old won. And this fear even persisted after I started my own company. I mean, I started my own company when I was 30.、Uh, if you want to be Bill Gates, you got to start sooner or later, right? <laughs> when I was an entrepreneur, I was presented with an investment opportunity, and then I was turned down. And that rejection hurt me. It hurt me so bad that I wanted to quit right there. But then I thought, hey, would Bill Gates quit after a simple investment rejection? Would any successful entrepreneur quit like that? No way, and this is where it clicked for me. Okay, I can build a better company, I can build a better team or better product, but one thing for sure, I can be a better leader, I can be a better person. I cannot let that six-year-old keep dictating my life anymore. I have to put him back to his place. So this is where I went online and looked for help. Google was my friend. <clears throat> I searched how do I overcome the fear of rejection. I came up with a bunch of、um, psychology articles about where the fear and pain are coming from.、Uh, then I came up with a bunch of rah-rah inspirational articles about don't take it personally, just overcome it. Who doesn't know that? <laughs> <laughs> But 
thought, why was I still so scared? Then I found this website by luck. It's called rejectiontherapy.com.、Um, <laughs> Rejection therapy was this game invented by this Canadian entrepreneur. His name is Jason Conley, and its basic idea is: for 30 days, you go out and look for rejection, and every day get rejected at something, and by the end, you desensitize yourself from the pain. And I love that idea. <laughs> I, I said, you know what? I'm gonna do this, and I'll film myself getting rejected 100 days, and I'll come up with my own rejection ideas, and I'll make a video blog. Out of it, and so here's what I did. This is what the blog looked like.、Um, day one, <laughs> Bor- borrow a hundred dollar from borrow a hundred dollar from stranger. So this is where I went to where I was working. I、uh, came downstairs and saw this big guy sitting behind a desk. You know, he he looked like a security guard. So I just approached him, and I was just going. I was just walking, and that was the longest walk in my life. I just hair at the back of my neck standing up. I was sweating. And my heart was pounding. And I got there and said, "Hey,、um, sir, can I borrow a hundred dollar from you?" <laughs> and he looked up. He's like, "No. <laughs> Why?" And I just said, "I said, no. I'm sorry." Then I turned around and just ran. <laughs> I felt so embarrassed. But because I filmed myself, so that night I was watching myself getting rejected. I just saw how scared I was. I look like this kid in Sixth Sense. I saw dead people. <laughs> But then I saw this guy. He, you know, he he wasn't that menacing. He was chubby, lovable guy. You know, and 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 he even asked me why. In fact, he invited me to explain myself. I could have said many things. I could have explained. I could have negotiated. I I didn't do any of that. All I did was run. I felt wow. This is like a microcosm of my life. Every time I feel the slightest rejection, I was just run as fast as I could, and you know what? The next day, no matter what happens, I'm not gonna run. I'll stay engaged. Day two, request a burger refill. <laughs> It's where I finish.、Uh, went to a burger joint. I finished lunch, and I went to the cashier and said, "Hi,、hey, can I get a burger refill?" <laughs> and he was all confused. I'm like, "What's a burger refill?" I said, "Well, just like a drink refill, but with a burger." And he said, "Sorry, we don't do burger refill, man." <laughs> so this is where rejection happened. I, I could have run, but I stayed. I said, "Well, I love your burger, I love your your joint, and if you guys do burger refill, I will love you guys more." <laughs> and he said, "Well, okay, I'll tell my manager about it. Well, maybe we'll do it, but sorry, we can't do this today." Then I left. And by the way, I don't think they ever done burger refill. <laughs> I think they're still there,、um, but the life and death feeling I was feeling the first time was no longer there, just because I stayed engaged, because I didn't run. I said, "Wow, great! I'm already learning things." Great. And then day three, getting Olympic donuts.、Um, th- this is where my life was turned upside down. I went to a Krispy Kreme.、Uh, it's a donut shop in mainly in the southeastern part of the United States.、Um, I'm sure they have some here too. Uh, and I went in and said, "Can you make me donuts that look like Olympic symbols?" Basically, you interlink five donuts together. <laughs> I mean, there's no way they could say yes, right? The donut maker took me so seriously. <laughs> so she put out papers, start jotting down uh, uh, the colors and the rings. It's like,、um, how could they make this? And then,、uh, 15 minutes later, she came out with a box that looked like Olympic rings. <laughs> and I was so touched, and I I just couldn't believe it. And、uh, that video got over five million views on YouTube. <laughs> the world couldn't believe that either. And <laughs> you know, because of that, I was on、um, in newspapers and talk shows and everything, and I became famous. And a lot of people started writing emails to me and and saying, "What you are, what you're doing is awesome." But you know, fame and notoriety did not do anything to me. What I really want to do was learn and to change myself. So I turned the rest of my 100 days of rejection. Into this playground, into this research project. I wanted to learn, see what I can learn, and then I learned a lot of things. I discovered so many secrets. For example, I found if I just don't run, if I got rejected, I could actually turn a no into a yes. And the magic word is why. So one day I went to a stranger's house. I had this flower in my hand, and I said, knock on the door. I said, Hey, can I plant this flower in your backyard? 
and, and he said, no.、Um, but before he could leave, I said, hey, can I, can I know why? And he said, well, I have this dog in, that would dig up anything I put in the backyard. I don't want to waste your flower. If you don't do this, go across the street and talk to Connie. She loves flowers. <laughs> so that's what I did. I went across and knocked on Connie's door, and she was so happy to see me. <laughs> And then half an hour later, there's this flower in Kanye's backyard. I'm sure it looks better now. <laughs> But had I, had I left after the initial rejection, I would have thought, well, it's because、uh, the guy didn't trust me, it's because I was crazy, because I didn't dress up well, I didn't look good. It was none of those. It was because what I offered did not fit what he wanted. And he trusted me enough to offer me a referral, using sales term.、Um, I, I converted that referral. Then one day, I also learned that I can actually say certain things and maximize my chance to get a yes. So, for example, I, one day I went to a Starbucks and asked the manager, Hey, can I、uh, be a Starbucks greeter? He's like, What's a Starbucks greeter? <laughs> I said, Do you know those Walmart greeters? You know, those, those people who say hi to you before you walk in the store and make sure you don't steal stuff, basically. And I, I, I want to give a Walmart experience to Starbucks customers. <laughs> well, I'm, Well, I'm not sure that's a good thing, actually.、Um, actually, I'm pretty sure it's a bad thing.、Um, and he was like, oh,、uh, yeah, this is how he looked. His name is Eric. He's like, I'm not sure. This is how he, he was hearing me. I'm not sure. Then I asked him, is that weird? He's like, yeah, it's really weird, man. <laughs> But as soon as he said that, his whole demeanor changed. It's as if he's putting all the doubt on the floor. And he said, yeah, you can do this. And just don't get too weird. So. <laughs> So, for the next hour, I was the Starbucks greeter. I said hi to every customer that walked in and、uh, gave them holiday cheers.、Uh, by the way, I don't know what your career trajectory is. Don't be a greeter. <laughs> it was really boring.、Um, but then I found I could do this because I mentioned, is that weird? I mentioned a doubt that he was having. And because I mentioned, is that weird? That means I wasn't weird. That means I was actually thinking just like him, seeing this as a weird thing. And again and again, I learned that if I mention some doubt people might have before I ask the question, people, I gain their trust. People will more likely to say yes to me. And then I learned I could fulfill my life dream by asking. You know, I, I came from four generations of teachers. And、uh, my grandma has always told me, hey, Jia, you can do anything you want, but it'd be great if you become a teacher. <laughs> But I want to be an entrepreneur, so I didn't. But it has always been my dream to actually teach something. So I said, what, what if I just ask and teach a college class? So I live in Austin at the time, so I went to the University of Texas in Austin, knocked on professors' doors, and said, Can I teach you a class?、Um, well, I didn't get anywhere the first couple times, but because I didn't run, I, I kept doing it. And on the third try, the professor was very impressed. It's like no one has done this before. And I came in prepared with the PowerPoints and, and my lesson. It's like, well, I can use this.、Um, well, when you come back in two months, I'll fit you in my curriculum. And two months later, I was teaching a class. This is me. You probably can't see this. It's a bad picture.、Um, you know, sometimes you get rejected by lighting. You know?、um, <laughs> but when I, when I finished teaching that class, I walked out crying because. I, I thought I could just fulfill my life dream just by simply asking. I thought I used to think I have to accomplish all these things, have to be a great entrepreneur or, or learn, get a PhD to teach. But no, I just asked and I could teach. And in that picture, which you can't see,、um, I, I, I quoted、uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Why? Because in my research, I found the people who really changed the world, who changed the way we live and way, the way we think, Are the people who were met with initial and often violent rejections. People like Martin Luther King Jr., like Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela, or even Jesus Christ. These people did not let rejection define them. They let their own re- reaction after rejection define themselves. And they embrace rejection. And we don't have to be those people to learn about rejection. And in my case, rejection was my curse, was my boogeyman. It has bothered me my whole life because I was running away from it. Then I started embracing it. I turned that into the biggest gift in my life. I started, I started teaching people how to turn rejections into opportunities. I used my blog, I used my talk, I used the book I just published, and I, I was even, I'm even building technology to help people overcome their fear of rejection. 
when you get rejected in life, when you are ma- make, facing the next obstacle or next、um, failure, consider the possibilities. Don't run. If you just embrace them, they might become your gifts as well. Thank you. Thank you.